video we're going to be looking at empirical formulae, what it means, some examples, and then how we perform empirical formula calculations. Um, so to start with a definition, empirical formula is or means the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms in a compound. Okay, so empirical formula, simplest whole number ratio of the atoms in a compound. And what does that actually mean? Well, if we write out some molecular formulae, um, which actually tell us the exact number of each um, atom, um, the exact number of each atom there is in a compound, and then we compare that to the empirical formula, we can see quite simply. So for example, if we start off with H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, in the, in the molecule of hydrogen peroxide, we have two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. Our empirical formula is the simplest ratio of these. So for every one hydrogen atom, we just have one oxygen atom. So the empirical formula is just HO. A second example, C3H6 or propene. For every one carbon atom, we have got two hydrogen atoms. Therefore, our empirical formula is CH2. Okay, so there's just double the number of hydrogen as there are carbons. Um, a third example, CaCO3, calcium carbonate. Now, in this case, the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms is actually exactly the same as the molecular formula. For every one calcium atom we have, we've got one carbon atom and three oxygens. Our empirical formula is the same as our molecular formula. One final example, c 6 H12O6, which is glucose. For every one carbon atom we've got, we have two hydrogen atoms and we've got one oxygen atom. The simplest whole number ratio, our empirical formula, is CH2O. Now for foundation tier, this is generally what you will be asked a question on, simply being able to write a molecular formula as an empirical formula. However, both on foundation and higher, you can also be asked to do some empirical formula calculations. Okay, so given the percentages um, that different elements contribute to the mass of a compound, you might be asked to work out the empirical formula. So let's do um, a couple of examples of this. The first one is going to be a relatively straightforward example. Um, in this question, we are told that 38.8% of the mass of a compound comes from carbon atoms. We're told that 16.2% of the mass comes from hydrogen atoms, and we're told that 45.1% of the mass of this compound comes from nitrogen atoms. There is a set method um, we are going to use to do this, and it's going to be the same for every question. So I'm going to write out the steps down the left-hand side and show you how we'd work out um, the empirical formula for this question. The first step is to simply write out the elements that you have contributing um, to the mass of this compound. Okay, so in this case, we have got carbon atoms. Okay, from here, we have got hydrogen atoms and we have got nitrogen atoms. Okay, next step. It doesn't matter whether you were given percentages or the masses of these, as long as the ratio, ratio of them is correct, which it will be. Um, in this case, we're going to do the percentages of them divided by the relative atomic mass um, of the atoms in question. So, um, percentages first. The percentage of carbon, it tells in the question, is 38.8%. Percentage of hydrogen, 16.2%. Percentage of nitrogen is 45.1%. Divided by the relative atomic mass. Again, this comes from my periodic table. For carbon, the relative atomic mass is 12. For hydrogen, the relative atomic mass is 1. And for nitrogen, the relative atomic mass is 14. So carbon, we now 38.8 divided by 12. Hydrogen, 16.2 divided by 1. Nitrogen, 45.1 divided by 14. So what this gives us then? Actually, is the ratio of the atoms in this element, okay? But it's not going to be a simplified form. So our first example for carbon, 38.8 divided by 12 gives us an answer of 3.23. For hydrogen, 16.2 divided by 1 is just 16.2. For nitrogen, 
point 0.1 divided by 14 gives us 3.22. Okay, our third step to answer these questions is to divide the answer we get here by the smallest answer we've got, if that makes sense. Okay, so divide by the smallest answer. And what this is going to do for us is simplify um, is simplify um, this ratio down. We're going to keep the ratio the same, we're going to divide by the same number each time, but we're going to simplify the ratio. And the smallest number we have here is 3.22. Okay, so we are going to divide 3.33 by 3.22. We're going to divide 16.2 by 3.22, and we're going to divide 3.22 by itself. So first off, 3.22 divided by itself is just 1. Here, 3.23 divided by 3.22. If you look, our answer is very, very, very close to 1. It's 1.003. We are going to simplify that. Um, I'll just round it, and we're going to say that that is 1. Because it's so close, we're just going to say that is 1. Last one, 16.2 divided by 3.22 is going to give us 5.03. Okay, again, this is very close to 5. We're going to round it. We're going to say that is 5. So by dividing through by the smallest number, we have simplified this ratio. We've got a ratio now of 1 to 5 to 1. To finish our answer off in this case, all we need to do is write this ratio as the empirical formula. Okay, so this is telling us for every one carbon atom we've got, okay, C1, we're not going to write the one, we're going to leave it as C. Uh, for every one carbon atom we've got, we've got five hydrogens, and we've got one nitrogen. Okay, therefore our empirical formula is CH5N. Sorry about that. Okay, so the empirical formula is CH5N. In the second example we're going to look at, um, it's a slightly slightly trickier um, question, but the idea or the, the guiding principle is the same. Okay, so in this question, we are told that we have got a comp, um, we have got six point two grams of phosphorus and we are reacting that with oxygen and we have formed 14.2 grams of phosphorus oxide. Okay, now your first question here has got to be how much oxygen um, do I have in this compound? So we started off with 6.2 grams of phosphorus, we produced 14.2 grams of phosphorus oxide the mass of oxygen must just be the difference between these. So the mass of oxygen is 14.2 minus the mass of phosphorus in that, which gives us 8 grams of oxygen. Okay. So 6.2 grams of phosphorus, 8 grams of oxygen. Okay, now I'm just going to write out my, um, my steps again. First step is to list the elements we, I've got. Second step, I'm going to do the mass this time, not the percentages. I'm going to do the mass divided by the relative atomic mass of the atoms. Um, step three, divide three by the smallest answer. Okay, and let's see where this gets us. So, the elements I've got, phosphorus and oxygen. The, see, the mass of them divided by the relative atomic mass. I've said I've got 6.2 grams of phosphorus and we worked out we've got 8 grams of oxygen. Where have I put my periodic table? Hmm, I seem to have lost it. Okay, anyway, if you look at your periodic table, the relative atomic mass of phosphorus is 31. Okay, so we're going to do 6.2 divided by 31. The relative atomic mass of large number for oxygen is 16. So this sets up my first line. Okay, if I work the if I work these out again, for phosphorus, 6.2 
divided by 31 gives me an answer of 0 0.2. And for oxygen, 8 divided by 16, I'm hoping is going to give me an answer of 0 0.5. Okay, dividing 3 by the smallest answer. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2, 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.2. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2 is going to give an answer of 1. 0.5 divided by 0.2 gives me an answer of 2.5. Okay, now at this stage last time, if you remember, we actually got whole numbers here. However, in this case, we've got a ratio of one phosphorus atom to 2.5 oxygen atoms. Okay, and this is a bit of a problem. Because if you remember, our empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms in a compound. So how do I turn this ratio here, 1 to 2.5, into a whole number ratio? Well, the easiest way is simply to times both of these numbers by 2, um, just by 2, sorry. Okay, so if I times both numbers by 2, I'm going to keep the ratio of them the same, but it should give me a whole number ratio. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to get two phosphorus atoms to five oxygen atoms. Okay, so my simplest ratio, which I get by times in uh, both of these by two, is two phosphorus atoms to five oxygen atoms. Therefore, my empirical formula is going to be P2O5. Okay, so it's really important that if you get um, an answer that isn't a whole number ratio, you do work out a way to turn it into a whole number ratio. Um, just as an, another um, little example of, sort of one you might see, if you were to get at this stage something like 1 to, I'm not sure, 1.33333, okay, this is not close enough to, um, to 1 or to 1.5 to round it kind of as it is at the moment. You've got to kind of use a bit of logic here and say, oh, if I times both of these by 3, I'm going to get a whole number ratio. So this one would be 3 to 4. Okay, so just be really aware that if the number doesn't obviously round, you're going to have to work out something to times it by to give you a whole number ratio.